Hey, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome back to Reflective Serialization. We finally switched over our code to use the serial library, and it's been beautiful. Simplified the code a lot, makes it cleaner, less error prone, and it should be a lot easier to make modifications to the commands or add new commands. So let's put let's put that theory to the test. Let's make a little modification to one of our commands now. The move command, instead of having a start, end, now it can have a sequence of two or more waypoints and the character must go to all those waypoints for the command. So instead of taking a pair of vec2 f's, we're going to take in a vector of vec2 f's. So obviously we got some work to do on the application layer. We need a different parsing for our standard input and then we need a different handling for the operation. So this regex pattern is fixed for, you know, two coordinates, but we are going to have n coordinates. So we're going to basically do this in a loop. We're going to peel off one set of coordinate every uh, iteration. So we'll change our reg regex pattern to this, which is, you know, a coordinate separated by comma plus the rest of the string. We've got our match here. Let's put in a... Uh, a move command and then this if is now going to be a while loop so while we match this pattern x is going to be the first match y is the second match in those coordinates we're going to in place back into the waypoints from that and then we should update the arg string now to be whatever is left so we're peeling off the front coordinate and whatever is left is the new arg string now if the number of waypoints that we got is two or more, then uh, we can send a command. We're gonna move this because it's a vector so we can reuse those resources a little bit. Now, if we didn't have at least two waypoints, obviously something went wrong there. And there you go. So, there's the parsing of the command. Now we go on to the other side, on the client, who's gonna receive the command and execute. So let's include ranges because I love my ranges. Yes, I do, people. We need our shortcuts too. And let's add a new coroutine. Move sprite along. And so it's going to take a vector of waypoints and it's just going to do, you know, move sprite two for each one of those in the waypoint vector. And now for our operation, we can actually keep exact same logic and everything. We just got to change how we initialize the stuff. So the start, yeah, I think maybe waypoints.front makes more sense. Now we don't want the coroutine to be move sprite two. We want it to be move sprite along. So that's going to take in the sprite, which is the same, and it's going to take in the waypoints, the waypoints to move to. But that that's a little tricky because that doesn't include the start waypoint that we've already put here. I mean, we could have it in the start waypoint here to just stay there for one frame, but it's a little nasty and is actually an easy way of making it clean. So how do we get clean with it? Well, we got the waypoints and uh, we just want to get rid of the first one. So why don't we just drop the first one? And then we turn that back into a vector. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. Now we have all the waypoints except for the first one that we dropped. That's the beauty of uh, ranges. You just put that slick stuff there in line. No, it doesn't build. Why not? No, because we you know we changed the thing. And obviously, the compiler is going to complain that this doesn't match up. That's good. So how do we make it match up? Well, again. Changes like these for serialization and deserialization, that's how you now serialize it as a vector instead of two values. Trust me, it would not be that simple if we were doing this shit manually. Ah, uh, what's your problem? Ah, uh, well, there's one thing here, and that is serial, it's, it doesn't bloat your compile time up with every single possible thing. It lets you pick what you want. So we want to now also serialize vector. So we include the vector.hpp, and there you go. We just switched it from two values to a vector of values. The, normally, this the serialization deserialization would take the most work, but that was like it was literally just two lines here changed, and it was good to go. All right, I got a little sequence in here. Let's see if it follows the sequence. Well, no, it did not follow the sequence. Okay, okay, my bad. Where's the problem? That's a little sneaky copy pasta issue here. Match, matches, eh, yeah, yeah. All right, once again, moment of truth. Don't blow up. There we go. He's going down. He should go now the opposite corner. He's going back up again. This might take a little while, by the way. He's going left. 
right? And there we go. Okay, so he followed the whole path. And I think we can probably execute a bunch of these at the same time. And that was, it was very clean to implement the changes in the serialization and the deserialization. The hardest part of this was the goddamn parsing of the text. Now the other thing I wanted to do, since the video is still young, is uh, I wanted to address the issue of, you know, not quite super efficient transfer of the data here. So I have two issues with the way we send our data. The first is that we're going to do two send commands here, which is going to generate two separate packets. One packet is only going to have four bytes in it, which is just to tell us the size of the second packet so that we know how much to read in. So that serial has the exact bytes it needs to deserialize. This ain't clean. We could actually pre-jack a single buffer that has the size at the beginning and then has the payload and send that in a single packet. That would be beautiful. So that's problem one. Problem two is just the way that um, a binary or any archive works is it needs a stream. So we need a stream that we're going to write this stuff out to. And the only real stream, that, a byte stream that we have available in the standard library is the uh, O string stream. So we use O string stream, that's cool. But in order to send that again across the socket, we need the we need the the raw bytes. We need access to the buffer of bytes that's been built up in this O string stream. So we have to call str, and that copies all the bytes into another buffer. So now we have the bytes that are in the string stream object, and another buffer of bytes in just a string. We don't need to do that. We shouldn't need to make that copy. But we can't access these bytes directly. We have to access through the .str function, which creates the extraneous copy. So how do we fix this? Well, ideally, like I mentioned, we want to build up a single buffer with both the size at the front followed by all the payload bytes. One problem with that is that we can't write the size first because we don't know the size until we have serial serialized the damn thing. So it's only after we've serialized the payload that we know the size, the serialized size in bytes. But by then, the stream has already been written to. We can't go back and write to the front of it. Uh, so that's annoying. So we don't want to use O string stream. We want to use like a different kind of stream. If we use a different kind, maybe then also we don't have to make this copy. That would be sweet, right? Now another kind of stream that we have well, looking at the client, we have ACO stream buff, which is a binary buffer, and we could wrap it in I, a stream. So we could wrap it in an O stream and then use that. That's okay, but it's still annoying to try to place the size at the beginning of this one. You can do it. I've done it. You basically have to first write in a placeholder four bytes, then serialize your data, then seek back to the beginning and write in the real size. So that's a little annoying and it's also annoying to use a stream buffer with a synchronous write. It works directly with asynchronous, it's meant to work with asynchronous, but when you try to use it with synchronous it doesn't like it. It needs a little extra sauce. So I don't want to use this one. I don't want to use it. I could, but I don't want to. What else can I do? Well, I could implement my own buffer type that works with std ostream and that has all the functionality exactly as I want it. So how hard is it to implement the buffer? So we want to implement std stream buffer which is just basic stream buffer of car. So basic stream buff. Okay, well what kind of members does it have? Because it has a virtual interface and we have to implement these parts. So all these ones that are not virtual, we can just leave them like they are and it should work fine. But what about the virtual one? There's quite a few of them, as you can see here. But if we look at it, locales. Do we care about locales? No, I don't think we do. So we leave this. One. Do we care about positioning? No, we're not positioned. We're just going to write directly into the buffer. We don't care about getting because we want to use it with an O stream, an output stream. So we only care about putting. And there's actually only two virtual functions that we have to implement for putting. And that should be enough to implement the buffer that is perfectly efficient for the use case that we have. Much more efficient than using, you know, O string stream. So we're going to create a 
our own stream buffer that is backed by a vector of characters, vector of cars, if you like. We'll call this one our vector packet stream buff, and it's going to inherit from public std stream buff. And the member data is just a std vector of, we could do a vector of cars. We could also do, we could make it a little fancier and say, nah, this is uint 8t. This isn't definitely, this is not just text data. It could also be other stuff, if you'd like. If you'd like to have that little distinction in there. So now we have to implement those two virtual functions that we saw in the documentation. So the first one is xs put in. I mean, who named these things? But this is how you append a sequence of bytes to the stream. And all you're going to do is do buffer insert using uh, iterator and then the data pointer and then the data pointer plus the size. Very simple. And you return how much was inserted. So that's very simple. Now the other one is a little weird and I'm not like I don't even really 100% understand where this is useful. But basically if this function gets a character we have to check if that is end of file and if not we should push it back and return it. Uh, but if it, they pass us end of file then we're supposed to try and flush the buffer because remember some buffers are backed by files right so you so you'll have a buffer and then that'll be connected to like a file and if the buffer is full you might want to flush it to get, make more room so you call overflow with e of f and then you're supposed to flush it and then return e of f it's it's stupid and it's not really important for our use case but you have you should implement it so i'm implementing it here the important thing is this one and it's dirt simple so now we have this interface, we should be able to use this like a buffer. And then when we're done, well basically we're going to connect this buffer to serial and serialize some stuff. And when we're done serializing it, we're going to have the bytes and we're going to want to send them over ACO. So how do we get, because this is private, how do we get the bytes out? We give ourselves a nice little function. We'll call the function yield and it yields out a ACO const buffer, which is basically just, you know, a pointer to the beginning and the end of the data. So we give ourselves this yield function, it yields out a const buffer. That's just wrapping our vector around ACO buffer and returning that, which is basically just a just a span, right? It's like a std span, pointed to the beginning of the buffer and the size of the buffer. Uh, and then we can use that when we're sending. But here's the other thing, because we want to be able to put the serialized size at the beginning of this buffer. So we could add some extra sauce to make that just automatic and clean. So first, let's create this reset function. And what this is going to do is it is going to resize the vector to be four bytes, exactly the, si the size of our size, right? Our payload size. And so now, when you put characters into the stream buffer, they're going to go after those four bytes. So we have four bytes at the beginning that are kind of like sitting there reserved. That's very good. Because now, when we yield the buffer, we yield it when we're about ready to send it, so we know the buffer is finished. So if we know the buffer is finished, we can write into those four reserved bytes the size of the payload, which is the size of the buffer minus the size of the reserved bytes at the beginning. And there you go. We have now automated the process of stuffing the size at the beginning of the packet. And of course, when we create one of these bad boys, we want to make, start it reset so it has those four bytes in there at the beginning. Very nice. So in our member data, put our vector packet stream buffer. We're going to put our O stream and it should take a pointer to our write buffer. It should not be angry. And then we'll have our binary output archive should have a reference to the write stream. That's the stream it is going to serialize things into, which will then go into the buffer. So now when we need to send a command, we don't have, we obviously don't have to create these streams or archives, we just go write archive, serialize the command into there. We then call socket.send and we give it the buffer, which is write buffer dot yield. And that will automatically write the size into the beginning of those bytes. And then we just got to get it ready for the next pass. So we should do reset. And that is a lot more efficient. We now have the number of packets that need to be sent with you know all their attendant overhead and we've reduced copies in memory it's a beautiful thing now the only question is does it actually work all right the commands seem to be working and you know just if it has if it's not immediately apparent the client doesn't need that kind of work because we're not using you know std string stream here 
we're using the uh, ACO stream buffer. And so that's going to be very efficient when it reads and if it, it's going to read using the OS sockets. And even if we say transfer exactly four bytes, it's probably going to get more than four and that's fine. They will go into the buffer and they will be consumed next time we read anyways. And, you know, you say, ah, oh, but you have two reads in here. Maybe you only want one. But no, like if you have two synchronous writes, you're going to generate two packets up here, two sends. But two reads like this is no big deal. And we don't have any of like the copying into like a temporary string or anything because our stream is connected directly into the AC read buffer. So this is already very efficient. It's only this one that needed some TLC and we gave it the TLC. So I hope you enjoyed that and it was a little, it was a fun little side quest into implementing your own stream buffer, which can actually be quite useful. And it's less, depending on what you're doing, it's less daunting than it might first seem. Now the title of this series is Reflective Serialization. And in the next video, we're actually going to get into the reflection part of it. We had the serialization. Now let's do some reflection. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more reflective serialization.